Hello, hello again and welcome to another tutorial in uh, the repair of uh, cameras and lenses. Now this time I will actually show you how I um, actually clean my um, aperture assembly and the plates um, in my old Nikkor um, AIS 85mm and it's a uh, to, uh, to aperture two <laughs> maximum aperture two so um, and let's have a look inside now <clears throat> the um, aperture system in this lens is a bit sticky I mean it binds a bit so if I use a I can show it this piece of, uh, of plastic with steel inside it should be possible with a normal lens to push the aperture pin here but um, it is not really possible so if I use my finger it's a bit sticky as you can see just do it again it's a normal piece of uh, plastic wound uh, steel um, so and it should be possible if I go closer it is possible but if I go here you see it takes a, a you have to use more um, pressure on the pin to get it uh, open and when it's closed uh, and sit on the camera uh, it will simply uh, let the um, I mean the pictures will be overexposed because of the too much slowly uh, aperture so it's simply not fast enough to 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 close down the aperture and prevent too much light coming in so how can we actually clean that I mean it's quite easy but we just need some tools just zoom out a little here um, we'll need a screwdriver a flat hit 1.2 millimeter and um, I use a brand called Vera which I like there are many other just get a good quality something like Baco or Viha or something like that and for the um, for the lens mount which I will take off because it's just much easier when putting in the aperture assembly into the um, lens assembly uh, body <laughs> inside the, the lens <laughs> um, and I use a PH00 uh, which I have filed the very pointy tip off so it acts I know it's not a JIS but it works really good I have tried those from um, Moody Tools uh, and I think the steel well, maybe it's just me but I don't think it's good enough compared to the Vera that's just my um, choice so but uh, if you want to use those I mean in many other cases they are really good it's a set of four you can buy on on um, ifixit.com and it works in, in many cases but <clears throat> I just like the Vera because it have a good grip here too so and we need a pointed tweezer which is very handy this is an anti, anti magnetic stainless steel and I make myself a tweezer a special one this is a master tool uh, brand so I simply bend the um, the two curved uh, ends here and make it as flat as possible and then file it with a Dremel tool file it so it's very thin <clears throat> and it's really good when putting in the aperture plates into the in here which I will show you later one can also use a um, lens sucker which is also good for blades 
and uh, you can actually buy one of those on um, Japan Hobby Tool, something like that. But <clears throat> there is also a longer tube with a very tiny uh, lens sucker head, which is also good. And I just put a ear spray thingy uh, bubble on it, and it can act as a lens uh, sucker plate, sucker, whatever, and it works pretty good. You, you can get this one on uh, Japan Hobby Tool. Now, some dentist tool, old dentist tool, from a Danish brand called Zenit. Um, I like them because I get them cheap from my dentist, and it's really good tool. A lens blower is also very handy. And um, yeah, one important thing is when working with those old lenses, it's also uh, some of the parts, I mean, especially the name ring here on front and the, the front lens group can be very sticky. So, to get off. So, by using one of those uh, sticky garden gloves, working gloves, this is a, a type called Flexible Basic 1006 from the Ox On. I think it must be something like that. And it's so good, which I will show you. And we also need some isopropyl alcohol, 99%, to clean the blades and the aperture assembly, which I will show. Now, to come into those uh, blades, <coughs> Um, we begin with the one little set screw here on the side of the the front barrel and for that I will use my um, 1.2 millimeter flathead screwdriver and just I mean not fully unscrew it just loosen it two turns or something like that and um, unscrew the front here it's not possible to take off the nameplate itself because it's part of the front here. So if you try to use some of those uh, lens tools like this and simply unscrew this, you will unscrew the whole front here with the nameplate. Now, it's it can sit pretty tight, so I will use my sticky gloves here and um, it will make it much easier to come into it. So by setting the the aperture to something like 2, the focus ring to near end, it will say 80, 0 0.85 or 85 centimeter. You need to unscrew this section here around 7, uh, 6.5, 7 turns counterclockwise this way. So we have a mark on the as the uh, infinity. It's something like over here I start. So have the point here. So simply unscrew it. There will be one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and a half. Click. It comes off. So it's come here on the, on the bottom name made in Japan. <laughs> it will come off. It could also be that it's turned um, it could be different in your lens when the screw set screw is ended up here, and then you begin because there's a double uh, thread. It can start here, there, and it can start there. Oh, there isn't any. No, there isn't only one. Sorry. 
it's a single thread so you have to end up somewhere here around in the bottom of the lens now over that and now we simply need to unscrew the whole front lens group which also can be done by um, by those sticky gloves and you will see there are two notches here one there and there but they are not to take off the uh, take out the, the the front lens group it will only take out the lens element so keep that in mind set it to 0 0.85 and then it can sit tight so have a good grip and here it's off and now we do not need the uh, sticky gloves uh, until we assemble it again uh, and just unscrew it there's no locking screw for this and then we have the front lens group this is here it looks okay uh, and then we actually looks into the aperture assembly which will be here keep in mind that the screw here I mean <laughs> there are two screws one there and there and the spring which will if set to 22 it will simply draw the aperture blades back into fully closed I mean almost <laughs> of course it will be 22 um, but it, it's a bit sticky here already and there are some signs of of oil on the aperture blades so but before taking that out it's important I mean really important uh, I haven't found a repair manual for this lens so remember to set a mark something down here it doesn't really matter where it is but just set a mark just to be sure you can assemble the uh, aperture system and it sits in a correct position so that's important so well I have already done it because I've take a sneak peek in here so make a scratch here and also in the ins on the inside of here so now I'm really sure this uh, assembly I mean aperture assembly will be put in correct without any problem there will be no adjustment after that because I know where the parts should sit exactly so <clears throat> what I also will do I will take off the mount uh, because it will make the whole process much easier when you assemble it again so therefore I will take off the three screws here on the back and uh, it should be quite easy if the screws just like those here um, is sit too tight one can use some nail polish remover with acetone and it should be with acetone and then actually uh, wait a minute. just to make it even more clean And then wipe away the rest of the so it will look fine and oil free and in this case it looks pretty good so so now that's uh, part of it can just uh, dust off all the dirt in here so now <clears throat> it's time to clean the plates and for that uh, I'll use a, 
a lens cloth, which is good for that. I mean, part of it. It's only the blade I use a uh, lens cloth. So, and clean that. So, and with this uh, process, the uh, the aperture will look like it's new, <coughs> 30, 40 years ago, or maybe more. <coughs> so, and clean this, especially on the edge here. I mean the edge here there are some tracks of of oil and it's uh, important that there is no oil at all so everything runs smooth without any sticky old <laughs> oil so and now we are back on track so now it's time to the plate itself, <clears throat> which, uh, I mean, they are not that oily, but they're still, they need some, some cleaning. I mean, it's not a new lens, but uh, still have to be okay. I like the way the this lens is actually render the picture. <clears throat> so now it will be even better when the aperture assembly it's is clean. So there. And it, it looks pretty fine. Oh. And one should not even think about using acetone for cleaning aperture blades. You will for sure destroy the blades because the blades are made of plastic. I mean, I think they are made of, made of plastic, so let's see if they are. No, it's actually made of metal, it looks like. <laughs> but in just in case you go into a lens, I mean, uh, we'll try to clean a lens with plastic aperture blades. Don't do it with acetone. And in, in this case, with the metal, Aperture blades, there will be no problem. I mean, I don't think. I haven't tried to clean blades with the acetone because I don't like the smell. It stinks like. Blah. <laughs> so, better use the isopropyl alcohol and have a open window to actually <coughs> take the the vapor away. So now it's time to put in the blades. So let's see how this is done. Just get free of, of uh, dust in here. So let's see what we can do about it. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, I will use a cone, some of those set of rubber cone from a Japan Hobby Tool. And I will simply put this, uh, the front of the aperture assembly, I will simply put it on the cone here. So it will be easier to 
when put on the blades I will simply drop this over and because I have taken out the uh, the lens mount I can see what's going on and have the pin this pin going backward um, so it will be easier to when have the aperture here I can simply put it in here so it will just be easier just an idea <clears throat> so let's have some blades on and let's see how they would go and uh, let's I can also do it with a normal tweezer doesn't really matter to me so put it on here it should just be a non-magnetic tweezer catch the, the small holes so and simply put it on here so like that so the tricky point comes when putting in the last blade because there's one hole some of those hole one is height under this blade so I need to lift it up just a little as I will show you in a short time now put this on here and then the last blade will I will simply flip out this put it out there one blade, the other blade here, will hold this, this blade here. So I can move it pretty much out, almost out to the edge. And then try to put in this one, which will be the last blade. And sometimes <coughs> it's just easier with a lens sucker. Uh, some cases just try to put it on so and there it is so this blade will be there <coughs> now one have to lift up this uh, <coughs> the first blade so bend it a little and simply push this blade over the last blade and now we have a quite uni I mean round hole so <clears throat> and then it's time to put this ring on and try to catch the the uh, this pin here will go into here this gap here so try to catch it and uh, it should look like when putting this on here and try to catch the, the notches for each of the uh, aperture pin from each blade and I can just move this into place and there it is 
So it should be possible <coughs> without any bigger problem to move the aperture and close the blade, which is hopefully done without problem. <clears throat> Something like that. And fully open it again. Everything is really light, so don't put on too much pressure on it. Now, put this in the middle of the cone and simply add this on and try to catch this pin here should be going into here, this gap here. It can take some attempts, uh, so don't, <laughs> don't be disappointed with that. <clears throat> One can also take up this uh, part here and possibly uh, put it on. And hopefully. It should be there. And then flip it over. <laughs> and then, since I sit, know where this aperture assembly should sit because of the little mark here I said before I take things apart, everything should be lined up without any problem. And then I can add my two screws. <clears throat> which will sit here and uh, <clears throat> put a uh, some kind of pressure on here to not move the uh, the aperture assembly when adding the screw in so there it is, one screw and the other one. I mean, we are not done yet, but this is just to hold the, I mean, prevent the assembly, uh, aperture assembly from fooling around. So, now it's, it's, it stays there. And is it possible to actually move this? Wow, it's much better. So, but I need to adjust the uh, line up the mark here. So just loosen it slightly, maybe half a turn on both of them, something like that, and line in the uh, the mark here, so it will be correct. Maybe you have to move it one way or the other way, just slightly. And then tighten the screws gently. So that's it. Then I can actually put the spring on here. It can be a little tricky, but you need a pointy tweezer for this. So now we are almost there. So if I move the uh, the aperture here, it will be really good. I mean, just like new. So that's quite easy. <clears throat> that was just a tiny fragment there, which I don't like. So. And that was that. So now it's uh, it's time to put in the. Uh, oh, one forgot one thing. If you want to to actually uh, 
prevent the screws from coming out you could add a little nail polish which is this is black something I don't know what but just add a little tiny drop so it will uh, prevent the screw from moving at all just put it on the side of the screw and let it suck in a little don't add too much it just have to be a little tiny drop on the side of the screw head which will um, and the plate here so the screw will will, uh, will stay there and that's it oh what it stinks I haven't understand that <laughs> now it's time to put in the um, the uh, mount and the aperture ring so we can just set the aperture ring to 22 there and then add the uh, mount remember this pin here has to go as long over as you can here and you have to catch this notch here for this pin and of course the fork here which will uh, move this part here uh, so it should be quite easy because I set the lens to infinity so it will be easy to catch the the fork in here and also the pin on the aperture ring so everything should be well lined up in a way one can use a pointy tweezer to move this part here and uh, try to catch the aperture ring and then we are done I mean not done yet <laughs> of course I need to put in the three screws here for the lens mount and it should be that hard to do and don't tighten the screws too much you maybe have to go into it again and do other things like just like the uh, the focusing system so now the lens is actually working here without any problem and the aperture is snappy as it should be in a normal lens so I can just add the the front lens group here and say well maybe I should just blow some small dust part away and one can also just uh, pull it in I mean add a little air on the uh, on the nail polish here and get the the acetone away so it doesn't stink that much and go maybe so so set the lens to near end add the front lens group catch the thread take care of the thread it's aluminium so go a little back and click the lens will just be put in and then tighten it good and uh, then I can just add my front ring nameplate whatever it calls uh, front barrel 
and uh, catch the thread somewhere where it is should be should be somewhere <laughs> come on there where it is the click and then screw it in take care of not holding in the in the focusing ring because the little set screw will simply go on the focusing ring so only hold down here not in the focus ring so set it to near end set the aperture ring to 22 so you have a good grip here and not uh, holding in the focusing ring and so you have a good grip and can fully screw in the front name ring plate barrel <laughs> whatever name they have oh, tighten it gently and then fully tighten the set screw and then we are back on track with a fully working aperture that's actually good there's no stickiness at all so well that was actually that um, hope you enjoyed the content and can use it to possibly uh, fix your lens it's not that hard you just need some tools which I will add links in the description so that's all for me Bye-bye. See you.